Um, you have seen some of my colleagues maybe passing by already. Um, this is Felix Barnes, our program officer, Sarah Miebach, our uh, new Kulturwald intern and a volunteer, and Chris is our um, IT assistant. Um, our office is the DAD Information Center Accra, which is, um, DAD is the German Academic Exchange Service. So we provide um, information to students on how to study in Germany, where to find universities, and so on. And um, recently we have started to give webinars in specific areas of studies. Um, so today we are talking mainly about um, studying film. Um, or performing arts, fine arts, um, in uh, that those areas in Germany. So first of all, my uh, colleague um, Zara will give a presentation on, um, well, studying film. So give some in some examples of film schools in Germany that you could apply for. Um, also, why to study in Germany? Why is Germany a good country to study film? Actually. Um, and also the scholarship opportunities that DAD um, has to give to students who study film. And um, I would now like to introduce to you, and uh, you've seen um, so, so two of our experts already. The third will be sitting with us uh, here in Accra, actually. Um, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, Joseph Aquesi. Um, <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, he is um, currently a scholarship holder from DAD and uh, studying at the Kunsthochschule Köln. Um, he has done his bachelor um, in Ghana at NAFTI and, um, yes, as I said, is now in his second year at the Kunsthochschule in Cologne. Um, he has uh, directed lots of movies in Ghana as well as Germany and he has um, also produced um, a film on our office, which I have to mention today, of course, um, because that was one of the most important films, of course. Um, thank you for being with us. He will um, give an insight on uh, what he's doing right now currently in Germany, how he applied for the scholarship and other information. So thank you for being with us. Thank you, and uh, also we have um, Mr. Jude Aquete. Um, he's also um, in Germany, both um, our film experts are in Germany, Ghanaian film experts. Um, he um, has done his master's in serial storytelling at the um, International Film School in um, Cologne. And um, he will also tell us more about um, his current work in Germany and film, studying film and doing film in Germany. Um, and um, yes, give some experiences and advices. Thank you also for being with us. Um, Thank you for me. He's somehow gone. Um, let me introduce her anyway. She will be here with us soon. Um, Gudrun F. Whitlock is a filmmaker and inter interdisciplinary artist. Um, she has um, directed and produced the film Adopted, for example. Um, a film about three European um, volunteers being adopted by uh, Ghanaian families, which came out of an art project of herself. She's also the head of department of the library section here at the Goethe Institute. And um, she will also give an insight on um, the system in Germany, the system of film um, making, the schools, but also the business itself. Um, so thank you, Gurun, for being with us. Um, I'll introduce her when she when she comes back and be with us. So for now, I'm very happy to see that some have um, checked in online. Um, some are here today with us. Now Gudrun is not in the picture yet. If you maybe sit the next, let's see. OK, perfect. So uh, I've introduced you already. Now um, I'm welcoming, welcoming again Gudrun F. Whitlock. Um, at the end, we will have a question and answer session. Also from here, if you have questions here or from whom you can type them and then we will also read them out um, to our three experts. So I'll hand over now to Zara, who will give you the first presentation on studying film in Germany. Thank you.
Okay. Also for me, welcome to our today's webinar on studying film in Germany or studying um, yeah, the arts in general. So So first of all, um, let me lead you through the topics of our presentation. At the, at the beginning, I will talk a little bit about um, why to study in Germany and um, about in, in general and in particular about studying the arts in Germany. And after this, we will look at some available scholarships and language requirements, as well as um, the life in Germany and student visa requirements. And in the end, I will also talk a little bit about some oppor opportunities you will have after you finished your studies in Germany. Okay. So why to study in Germany? So first of all, Germany has always been pursuing excellence in research, which is only one reason for the very good quality um, by the, uh, by the quality in Germany, the research quality has always been outstanding. And if you look, for example, at the University of Göttingen, you can see that this university alone produced about 44 Nobel Prize winners. It helps also Germany's um, economics to have um, high economic success in the, in the past and also today. But in addition to that, did you know that, for example, Germany has the highest population in the, EU, in the EU and that it is also the second most popular country of immigration? And furthermore, Germany has a very high density of universities, universities which is only one reason why it is very popular among international students. So if you go to the university in Germany, you will experience excellent research and tuition. You will have first class services for all international students among a very broad variety of subjects. And uh, depending on the university and its programs, you, um, the language of instruction will be German or English. Um, furthermore, Germany has very low costs of living and also nearly no tuition fees. So for example, if you study at a um, public university, there are no tuition fees. You, always, you only have to pay a small semester contribution from about 150 to maybe 300 euros depending on the city and university. So here you can see some examples about um, studying the arts of film in Germany. So you have three universities in Cologne alone. So for example, the Kunsthochschule für Medien Köln, where, where um, Josef is studying at the moment, there you can do your uh, master's and your bachelor's in media and fine art. The bachelor's course, for example, is three years and the master's is two years. Then you have the Technische Hochschule Köln, where you can do your bachelor's and master's um, in integrated design. And you can always um, also do a bachelor's program in digital games. And um, Jude is at the moment studying um, at the International Film School Cologne. There you have, a, a, there you have very opportunities um, in studying Bachelor of Arts in Film. So you could, for example, uh, put your focus on screenwriting or digital film arts and production design, um, to name only a few. You can also do your masters in serial storytelling or digital narratives. And um, then there's also a university where you can do your master of arts in music, and this is um, the University of Augsburg. And um, yeah, there you have your focus on performance arts. But these are only some examples, so if you look for um, studying film, you will find some more. So how can you finance your studies in Germany? So there are at the moment um, three available scholarships from the DAAD. You have one um, in the field of music, one in the field of um, the performing arts, and one in the field of fine art, design, visual communication, and film. 
all these scholarships are for graduates, so not for not for bachelor students, but for masters. So if you want to do your master in Germany. Okay, if you want to apply for scholarships, what um, do you have to submit? What are the important docu documents? So in general, as I said, the scholarships are for graduates. So you need to hold a bachelor in the desired field, which shouldn't be older than six years. And um, depending on the university, you will also um, need to prove that you have some German proficiency, but if the course is um, completely in English, then you don't need um, the German, German language. And there are also some university programs, not many, but some, that um, specify age limits. So for example, I think the Kunsthochschule für Medien, they um, say that you have to be uh, younger than 28 to 30 years. So sometimes um, university programs have these age limits, so um, have a look on, on this as well. And what is really important if you want to study um, film or arts in Germany is that you have to submit a work sample, some kind of work sample. So you need to show, that, show them your work. So for example, if you've studied film or if you're interested in film, you should um, maybe create a, a sm small or a short film um, and submit it as a DVD or video. But also for arts or music, um, you can do a short presentation about your work. This is um, really an <coughs> important document which you have to submit for every, I think, every university and the scholarships. Okay. So, but there are also some other opportunities. So if you are not qualified for a DIAD scholarship, you can also have a look on some other databases. For example, as it is stated here, the funding guide. There you can check if um, other scholarship schemes are available. And um, you can also look for Ghanaian funding opportunities. So sometimes you can find uh, scholarships from here. You could also have a look at the university um, homepage because sometimes universities offer scholarships for international students. So um, please check um, the university you're interested in if they offer some scholarships. And um, yeah, another opportunity is of course to uh, finance yourself, be self-sponsored. Um, or if it is possible during your studies, you could also work part-time. Um, if you have the time. Okay. Okay, now we look at the language requirements. So how much German would you need? Um, the level of German depends always on the, uni on the university and the programs. So some programs could be totally in German, so you would need a good German language proficiency, but some can also be international ones where you, um, where you don't need any German language because uh, the program is in English. But also, if the program is in English, the German language um, will always benefit you during your, during your life in Germany, because you can make contacts a little bit easier, and you can, um, you can enjoy the life in Germany more, if you know a little bit of the language. So here are some reasons why it is, um, why it is uh, useful to learn German, for example. Uh, more than 105 million people in the world speak um, speak German as a mother tongue, and with this, Germany uh, or yeah, German is um, the 10 most important mother tongues in the world. And um, also within the EU, it is um, it is one of the three official languages. So it also helps you if you want to work um, in Germany part time, for example, during your studies, you would benefit from knowing some German language. And of course, also, um, if you look at some milestones of social and scientific history, you can find, for example, Kant's philosophy or Goethe's poetry, which are written in German. Um, if you want to learn German, or maybe some of you have already started, you can uh, do it here at the Goethe Institute. So you can um, join courses from beginners to, um, yeah, to proficiency levels. Um, you can also do, do the test here at the Goethe University, 
or you can look at some other home pages which are stated below like watchuni.com or DW World. So as I said here at the Goethe Institute you can start with a base as a basic user then continuing to independent user and also do your proficient user. And um, if you're interested in this, um, for example, the A1 course, it's a two-month one and you have uh, lectures five times a week in the morning. And, um, but for more information, you can, um, you can ask here or you can look at the Goethe Institute's homepage uh, where you can find all the relevant information. Of course, the university life is important, um, but you have also many, many opportunities to, um, to explore Germany um, outside the university. So, for example, we have 4,500 cinemas, 145 public theaters, and 280 private theaters. And also, for example, some big cities have uh, English theaters, which you can also join if you, if you are interested in this. Then you have many museums and also uh, UNESCO World Heritages. Like, um, like earlier I talked about the different universities where you can study in film and three of them were in Cologne or in Cologne. And uh, for example in Cologne you could visit the cathedral there which is one of the UNESCO World Heritages. Um, this is an example about the living expenses you can expect if you study in Germany. Um, so, uh, at the, so you would need around 750 euros, but of course this depends on the city you're studying in and also about and also on your <coughs> personal um, personal life. So um, the expenses. This is also to give you an idea um, about what you can expect. But what is really, really important is that you need to prove uh, your financial resources for the, um, for the visa. So for the visa application, you need to have about 8,640 euros for the first year. So this is a really important requirement. And um, it is now also allowed that you work during your studying in Germany, so you can work either 120 days in full-time or 240 days um, part-time, which can help you to finance your studies. Um, what, else are, what else is required for the visa? So you need your admission letter from your university, um, as I said, the proof of financial support, and then um, if you are qualified for a scholarship, you also have to prove um, prove the scholarship and show the award letter. And um, then another really important point is that you have um, information about the university you, are, you, will, you will study and also the program outline. So it's um, really useful to provide um, during your visa application to provide them information about what are you going to study, how is it going to benefit you in your further work life, and things like that. Um, but if you have further questions to that, you can always come here to our consultation hours and we help you with your visa interview preparation. Okay, and last but not least, what are the advantages you can benefit from if you're coming back after you've finished your studies? So, for example, you can apply for financial support as a returning expert through the Center for International Migration and Development. You can join different alumni communities, so for example the alumni community in Ghana, as well as the alumni portal Deutschland. And um, there are further benefits um, which you can find um, on, the, on our homepage. And with that, I thank you for your attention. Can I give now the word to Josef? Or back to Barrett. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you. Um,
cannot see you yet. We cannot see you yet. Um, there we are. Great. So um, if you have any questions now on that presentation, I would like to ask you to write them down because we will really bundle the questions at the end because some of the questions might even be answered during the experience reports of those who have done some of the things that Zara just uh, introduced. So um, we will go on to uh, Joseph now. I haven't uh, mentioned he's also the director of Real Maker Studio here in Ghana. Um, so established as well here in Ghana as now in Germany. Um, so I think you can give a lot of advice for both countries actually, but mainly we want to know how it went for you to study in, or to do studies right now in film and how was the application procedure and so on. So I'll give the word to you now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Hello everyone. I'm going to be drinking a lot of water because uh, I needed to sort of clear a little fever I'm feeling. Um, I prepared a little presentation. Is it okay if I open it? Can I open it? Do I need to start something first? Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, one second. Okay. Can you see? Yes. All right, okay, so, um, okay, now I can't see anyone, okay. Okay, so this, this is just to help a point, so it's not too elaborate. Um, so, uh, studying in Germany, why, why did I decide Germany, first of all? Um, I realize um, Sarah already spoke about that, there are so many points listed, but for me it was three things. Because um, if you think about it, when you are when you are here in Germany and you're studying, well, especially in the film school and the art school one, there's the freedom to do or study basically whatever you want in the field. Um, and particularly in my school, Construction of Media and Code, um, you can do not just film; you can decide to even get into performance arts or to get into um, uh, uh, I don't know, writing today, tomorrow, you can be doing editing. One, one, don't see your presentation right now. Give us one second. It's like, you, okay. One second. Okay. Wait, I think I, I need to probably press something. One second. Can you see it now? No, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay. I can see it. You can see it. Uh -huh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So let's. Okay. Wipe I'm going to make a white screen. Is that okay. Okay. Yes. It's gone again. You just control my screen. <laughs> okay. All right. it's, gone again. it's gone again. Try it again. Please open it again, like you did just now. Uh, then we saw it, and then you click again on foil build, I guess. Maybe you just don't click on foil build models. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. yes. Can you just uh, put the next slide on? Just leave it like that. Okay. Okay, okay, cool. I leave it like this. Okay, okay. Let's All right. It. All right. Can, can I go on? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, so like I was saying, um, I chose to study in Germany for three reasons. Um, the freedom to do whatever you want, especially in the school that I chose. Um, the school allows you to study whatever course, you, like you choose the, um, the, the, the courses that you want to do and you choose what time to go for it. It's like unbelievable. And second was opportunity which I've stated here. Um, when I say opportunity, I'm talking about the fact that um, there are of the art equipment, um, all the prof all the lecturers if I should say that way, in school are professors, which means everyone there is top notch. They've studied either in the US or just have like the best they're the best in what they do. 
and so the education there is top notch, and you get to benefit from all these things: the the professors, the equipment, and the prof some because some of the students who come there are actually professionals, and you get to get to use all of them for free while you're in school. So imagine that opportunity. And the third thing is that all this you get it for free. When I say free, I actually mean free because in Germany tuition is free. Um, and this is this is mind blowing because studying film in any part of the world is practically the most expensive thing. Apparently, after studying, you know, to be a pilot, film is the next expensive thing. And in Germany, is free. So, um, I mean, the only thing you pay for, which is actually going to help you because you only pay like something for your semester fees and that is actually your transport which allows you to travel the whole region where you're staying. So these three things I said no I'm going to do my masters in this country. Um, now um, okay I didn't add this to my presentation but I'm going to talk about it. Um, applying to get a scholarship which is very um, important, crucial. Um, so what happened was I, I had already made up my mind whilst I was about to finish NAPTI to get uh, to do my master in Germany. Um, and um, I had already been to Germany before so I tried, I would known the school that I wanted to go to. Um, so the basic thing, the main thing that was, I think the main thing even important for everyone else is first to find out the school you want to go to in Germany and get the admission. Because as soon as you get, at least get something, get some kind of um, acceptance, you know, show them your work, you know. And it's very simple actually. You go to most of the schools in Germany, like you go to their, you go to their website, they'll tell you this, um, the, how to apply. So long as you have whatever, your, sam your work samples you have, um, stuff you've done, if it's a performance video you've done, you know, whatever it is. For filmmakers, of course, if you've made some films, you just send it over. And to be honest, you have a great chance if you've done at least a short film that has won an award. Fine, you haven't won an award, but you've done a film that is good. You're in. And with that, applying for the scholarship is way easy. Um, I don't know, but this is how it works for me you make sure your admission is on point, you're getting that, you know that it's, you know, they are, they, your admission is going to be accepted and then um, applying for the scholarship itself um, won't be as difficult because it's almost the same requirements for the admission that is for the um, scholarship. Um, so then moving on, um, I, I just tried to make something quick, beginning, middle, end for how it's been studying so far here. Um, so the good thing is, even if, I mean, my school required me to get a B2 level proficiency in German. Now B2, and at that point I was A1 and a half, so to say. And it takes a while to get to B2. But the good thing about the DAD is when you get accept, when you get like accepted, they try to get you to whatever level of proficiency um, needed for your school. So I went to Germany earlier before my school started and um, within four months I was able to move from A2 to B2. It was a very intensive course, really amazing and it was all paid for by DAD. Now the good thing about this part is that um, it's four months, I go to language school from 9 a.m. to like 1 p.m. And then there's a whole day free. So this is the time to socialize, you know. And that is what exactly what I did. Um, so um, in the beginning of my studies, which was like the studying German, I used that same time to socialize, to get to know people, get to know the culture uh, very much. Um, time to make friends actually because, you know, it's, it's a foreign country and you have to um, visit other states and all that. Um, and yeah, that was uh, actually a good time. And it, was and it was summer, so 
And somehow in Germany, there's always something happening. It's it's really amazing, to be honest. Um, but of course, there are always challenges. Um, I put just them in a few points. First thing is that learning German is not easy. Um, you have to take it seriously. German is, I don't know, for me, I think it's one of the most difficult languages. I'm still, um, I'm still learning. I'm good at it. I can make a conversation. But it's difficult, and you have to really um, um, uh, put the effort into it. The best way, and I've seen people do it so lovely. I maybe I'm a bit antisocial, but you, if you socialize a lot, if you you know are the outgoing type, and you don't mind being laughed at or being you know, you learn it easily because you you speak it a lot. Um, so that's one challenge with my, the beginning of uh, studying in Germany. Now the second thing is finding it hard to fit in. Um, I'm sure everyone knows this, but when you get into any social setting, you know, just you find that everyone find, you know, there are always pockets of people, they, they form their own groups. And coming from, you know, Ghana, from Africa, there's always a, you know, there's always the kind of pre prejudice. Um, but you have to be the one to be more outgoing. You have to be the one to prove them wrong that, hey, you know, I'm from a great place. You know, you have to really be friendly. And people would not uh, try to distance themselves from you. Um, so um, I was trying to find an example. It's not coming to head right now, but um, finding it hard to fit in, you would realize that from the beginning, but the, the easiest way to overcome this is to um, you be nice and try and socialize and people will be nicer to you. Actually, if you think about it, Germans actually, when you see them on the first glance, they are unapproachable. They seem like very strict, very proper, you know, um, but go to them, smile, talk to them, and they will smile back and they will be nice and friendly. Like this is something I've seen on a daily basis. So just be the one to make the first move and you would actually, um, yeah, they actually make some good friends, to be honest. Um, racism stairs, well, um, this, of course, racism still exists, but it's very undertone, forget about it. It's not, um, it's, you're not going to meet it like, you know, how you hear about it in, in the US, for instance. Um, over here, you have to, it's like going to Nima to meet the bad guys in Nima. This is, this is like how you actually face the racism, racism. Um, but, the, you know, you, you are really, there's nothing really going to happen. You're safe from any of, any racial slurs or anything like that. Um, but what you would really get as a black person or as an African in Germany is stairs. I think naturally, well, I don't know why, um, maybe the Germans there will explain, but Germans like to stare. Um, people will look at you when you're in the tram or in the train, you will get a lot of that. Um, it's, it doesn't mean any harm, it's just people are excited to see, you know, an exotic black person. And you will get that a lot. Yeah, so um, just to, to let everyone know, um, I'll take it, I'll be faster. Um, okay, so now the actual study program. Mm, um, so my study program, for instance, I don't know whatever school that you, are, you, you intend to go to, but for my school, I would recommend to everyone, um, for a master's program, it's project-centered. So imagine this, the school, the government, the German government puts aside money for every student accepted to make two projects. This money, you didn't put in, the, the government has put that money that, hey, come, you're a student, take it and make films, do whatever you want to do with it. Every student is entitled to this. And you are like this is how you get your masters, and this is what the this is what the professors will want you to focus on. So 
when it comes to taking classes and courses and all that, that is like, um, you know, that is by the way, you need like maybe four courses to complete, and then you are done, and then you focus on your master or your projects. So for me, this is like hallelujah, because you have time to really focus and get the great, the best films, you know, out there. Um, another, but in any case, you need to take some courses. Um, even though I wasn't, I'm not supposed to take so many courses, I took about nine of them um, last, no, I tried about nine of them last semester, last two semesters. Um, and in my school, I don't know about all the other film schools, but in this school, it's very informal, like it's almost like a round table, you know, and you don't feel like you're being taught anything, you feel like it's a discussion, you know, and think about it, these are professors you are talking with, you know, and they will sit down and you will be sitting around and, you know, it's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you give your, your mind, you say what you want to say, the professor says, oh, okay, you might be right, this is how it is. Um, and at the end of the day, there are some courses that at the end of the course you would get to do a, pro a film together, a project together. It's amazing. It, and you won't get this anywhere in the world, I think. Um, but yeah, that's how it is um, for courses. They call it seminars. And, you know, <clears throat> when you're a student in Germany, yeah, you, you are entitled to go to film festivals. Like, it's given to you. you in fact, the, the only thing is that you don't go. The opportunity there was a Cologne conference. So many of them I can't mention because of time. Um, oh, oh, my mouse is missing. Okay. Yeah. The only thing is, and this one, please, everyone should bear this in mind, is the language. You need to, you know, like I've said all these good things about the school, but without like getting a good grasp of the language. You would really not fit. You would you would be so afraid to even be part of anything because it's it's an important part of it. Um, so two things: you can get to a certain level, and then whilst you're there, it improves, or you master the language and then you come. I mean, for, for in any case, there are, there are ways to get over it. But the language is important. Um, second thing is openness. This is Germany. It's an open country. It's very like you find every kind of person here. This is what I've realized. Um, and when I say openness for a film school, for an, for an art school, it's even more because it's an art school and there are people here. Um, maybe I should explain, but I wouldn't um, <laughs> because. Uh, I think I think we get it. I'll move on. Um, about humility, yes. Now, um, because everyone in this one, take it very. I want everyone to understand this. Everyone here is fairly good at what they do. Like there are people here, even if they're not good, they will make up with it uh, with hard work. So you need to be humble. Even if you are the best at editing or the best at drawing, you need to humble yourself. And that's the only way that you can get, like, you can really fit in and be part of, you know, as if you don't know anything. You know, actually, sometimes they would think you don't know anything because you are from Africa. And that is actually a good thing. So you're like, oh, I'm learning from you. And at the end of the day, you learn. You learn, you learn, you learn. And always offer help, especially in the film school, especially in the, the school that I'm in, um, you, you need to, always, people sometimes will come to you and start pitching their ideas to you, and you need to, like, say, hey, oh, you're doing a film, I'm going to do sound for you, I'm going to do this for you. If you don't do that, when it gets to your film, you will be suffering and trying to get help, you wouldn't get it from anywhere. And that's how, that's how the school is, you're not, you're not, put on a roster and said, and they're told, oh, you're editing for this person, or you're shooting, and you're acting for this person, or you are, no. If you, everyone has his own project, you get your own crew, 
you organize everything and you make your film. That's how it's done over here. There's that freedom. And finally, excuse me, excuse me, sorry. Uh, finally, reliability. This one, I'm going to be fast, but it's very important. Um, we're Ghanaians, we're Africans, and even me, I've, I've, I've fought it with this. Like, the Germans, like, really, they, they attribute punctuality, for instance, to respect. Like, if someone says, hey, we are meeting at 9 o'clock, you come at 9.05, it's like you've disrespected them. And, so, and for, I've, I've gotten, like, insults because of this. And don't take it like, oh, you can't talk to me. Like, no, you have made a mistake. And you have to take it, like, very seriously. It's things, like, very importantly. Um, rehabilitation is a huge thing. We can't go into it now, but it's just one of the things that um, I've had to deal with um, while I've been here. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's the end. Um, uh, I wrote something here, which meant, or uh, in short, um, I mean, being here and being a filmmaker, I've come to understand that success is not only the taste about what you know or what you've learned or what you really care about. There's so many good people here. But there are people who care about money, people who care about, I don't know. But if what you care about is like social issues or you care about, you know, changing the perception, it will tell in your work. And that will set you apart wherever you go or whatever you do. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. Thank you, Joseph. I hope you hear clapping. <laughs> Great. Yes. You, you hope what? I hope you heard us clapping. Okay, right. There was clapping here. Yeah. <laughs> An applause. All right. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. so thank you for that uh, quite uh, concrete insight. I, even myself, I've learned a lot about Germans. It seems we are staring at people. <laughs> um, a lot. It, it's good to also <laughs> have these impressions. No. Um, all right. We will continue and um, hope that you will be with us for some question and answers. I'm sure there, there will be questions on what you just said. Thank you for now. Um, I would like Jude now to uh, tell us more about your experience. Um, if Joseph could switch off, uh, if you could switch off your microphone right now, that would be great. I'll okay, do I'll do that, I'll do that. Thank you. So Jude, tell us more about your experiences. Jude has finished his master's recently, I think, and is working as a freelancer, am I correct? Um, on filmmaking in yeah. Germany right now. Okay, all right. Then let us know your um, experience, please. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a presentation like Joseph, but well, I'll since it's about recounting my, my experience, um, I'll make the best of it. For, in my case, okay, I studied at the International Film School in Cologne. Um, for, those of us in, for those of us in Cologne, by the way, I'm also in Cologne, and oh. it's somehow noted to be, it's a, funny thing between both schools, like my school and Joseph's school, uh, sort of rival schools. So I'm from the rival, I'm from Joseph's rival school. But it's, most of the things he said are like, are common, are common with my school as well. So first of all, I'll talk about how I found out about um, the program I studied, I did a master's in serial storytelling. And serial storytelling is basically, it has to, it has to do with writing and like it's a study on writing and producing series. Not just television series, but series. It deals with series of, from different formats. Um, like, yeah, like web series, it goes from web series, it, even like we even dealt with transmedia. We went into games as a, at a certain point, but it was mainly it. 
mainly consisted of studies on television series. The well-known television series we have is this series like Game, Game of Thrones, House of Cards, you name it. Um, yeah. So this, this is what I studied in the International Film School in Cologne. And it was a two-year master program. I was, how I found out about it was, I, I went to, I also attended NAFT, like Joseph. And I'm sure you know NAFT is just two blocks away from the Goethe Institute. So I guess it was, I, I, um, I found the poster on the NAFT notice board. I guess it was, I, I found out it was from the Goethe Institute. And that was how I found out about the course. I, I was encouraged to apply and I applied. Unfortunately, fortunately I was admitted and like Joseph said, the application process is basically the same. I, I yeah, I believe from the presentation as well. They would you would you would have to show the work you've done. In my case I also wrote a um, sort of a motivation letter as in yeah why what motivates me to do the what why I want to do the course I think the two key things in that letter was why I would want to study the course and what what I can contribute as well what what I'll be able to contribute as a student because it's for this course the main focus one of the main things this course focused on was collaborative writing like for series I'll, I'll take the time to explain a little for television series especially there's it's usually not just one person writing there's some what we call a writer's room so you have a head writer probably the one who who is in who is in Right to the whole story and all that. So this is why I had to also write about what what I would have to con what I have to contribute to the team effort. And that's also one thing I noticed, and that's very important here. In studying here, it's um, yeah, it's like knowing that you are you have to contribute something. It's a team effort, so you can't be for me, it was sort of a challenge because I started out as I used to be a very, very, very introverted person. Like I would hardly, I had to learn to open up when I came here. So that was it. And yeah, I sent samples of my works since it had to do with writing. I sent samples of my of scripts I had written in school and on my own. And I also sent my my work samples, like productions, short films. I studied animation, by the way, in NAFTI. So it was sort of a sort of a diversion into another field. Because animation had a lot a lot of just more visual storytelling, like visual arts. I diverted into the more into more behind the scenes, more into the writing aspect. That's what I studied for my masters. So I also I also gave samples of my work in animation and yeah. That was what those are the works I sent for my application. And I had to send of course my certificates and other stuff. And uh, yeah. So I was admitted, and I had a I had a Skype interview. Wait, I had it. I ha, I was invited for an interview, a Skype interview, before I was notified that I'd been admitted. And then the next issue, in my case, if I had known, I think if I had known earlier, I would have gone straight to the DAD and applied. I think I 
by the time I got there, I, I it was it was my fault because I was late. The time had already passed for my program, so it, I could have been financed by the DAD because I found out a year later that my my course and my school it was also included in the list of schools and yeah a list of courses for which if um I hope I'm not wrong but if someone could correct me if I'm wrong but I found out that I found out later that my 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 school and my course was also included in the list of courses that could be financed by the DAD so like what was brought up in the presentation there was a case of the 8000 something it, in this this time is 8640 euros but then it was 800 8040 euros that had to be paid to as in for to for proof of like proof that I could sustain myself for cost of living expenses and all that so it was more like what you you would call self finance. I I I got I managed to get a cousin and family family members to help me to pay that into an account there, and I was able to move there and start the course. And another thing about this course at that time when I started, for this course I was my group my year group was a pioneer like we were the very first to start this course. So we're sort of the guinea pigs. And it well, in spite of the fact that we were like guinea pigs because we were the very first, it turned out really great. It turned out really well. So for this course I I couldn't get there was a scholarship available from an organization that supports the school. But the the scholarship started only after only from the second semester, and it's a four semester program. That's two years, so it means the first semester. It means the scholarship was based on my academic performance in the first semester. So and there was only one scholarship available. All of us who wanted to apply were competing for the for the same scholarship. It means only one person could get the scholarship. So it was based on uh, academic performance and other things as well. We would have to be called for interviews to prove again why like what right to to prove that we are the best candidates for the scholarship. So I went through the first semester. There was a student loan option available. I took that. In yeah, for for this case, it's true that um, it's true that education is free in Germany. For this case, it was. I think. I think it's. I think it has to do with the school. Like for this school in particular, I don't know. I think it's it was it's more of a private school that's affiliated with the with the public university. It's affiliated with the Technica Hochschule. So I got. Um, yeah, it's affiliated with the Technischen Hochschule, like with the a departments in the Technischen Hochschule, but it's still an expensive course. So it's one of those few cases where it's like where you would either have to finance your own study, or you'd have to get support from an organization like some of the organizations that were. Um, like yeah, where you'd have to get funding from organizations that would like to sponsor students, like an organize like the organization that was supporting my school, or a student loan. But apart from this one, I think like all the investors here for studying here, it's it's free. 
you only have to pay some amount. I, that's I think two hundred around two hundred close to two hundred and fifty. That covers your monthly ticket for every semester. And that mean um, with that ticket, you, like J Joseph said, you could go through the whole region of North Rhine. Westphalia. Yeah. yeah. So I took the student loan for the first semester and then for the for I had to, after the first semester I applied for the scholarship and by God's grace, thankfully I was given the scholarship. I was given this um yeah, I was given the scholarship. Out of twelve of us, I think four of us applied and I was given the scholarship. So, studying in the school, um, again, it's similar to it's similar to what Joseph said. The professors, the the people who were lecturing as lecturers, in my case, most of them came from the German television industry terrain. Like these were people who were working in the field, who were brought in to teach us, so they were professionals. So whatever like whatever they were talking about was what's on the ground, what's happening now, what's trending. And it was top notch. Like it was I mean most all of them were top notch people. It was my course was an English my course was in English. It's an international course, so all of us were from different parts of the world. In spite of that, before I came to Germany, I got to study for six months up to B1 level. So that really helped in going around, like communicating. If, if I had to buy stuff, if I had to, if I needed help with directions, if I needed to talk to people, if I needed, and one thing I didn't. One thing I, I haven't mentioned, of course, is after I was, I was given, before I came to Germany, I was given a three months visa. So when I got here, I had to renew when I started school. And there was a lot of paperwork that was involved. So this is one thing I want everybody to have in mind. It can, like, that's one thing that's not easy because, well, yeah, people talk about a lot of other I think it's a good thing because you have to be on record like there's a lot of paperwork involved and you have to be alert like like Joseph said one thing that one thing I found which really hit me was it was sort of a culture shock because I am coming from a more relaxed environment. Getting here, it's everything is almost always happening on time. If you are not if you are not careful, you miss a, a bus or a tram, you might it would affect the next like if you miss a tram and you have to connect somewhere, it affects <laughs> there are consequences like if you're not punctual, there are very, very heavy consequences you have to deal with later. Yeah. True. So I had to learn very fast. Yeah. If I may ask you to Hello? summarize. Summarize. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So I had to I had to learn very fast to adapt to the environment. Yeah. So one thing I'd also like to talk about is. Um, openness and clarity I in dealing with people here as especially um, if there's something on your mind just say it as it is we Ghanaians tend to dilly dally sometimes yeah but generally studying here has been great there have been lots of opportunities if you open your eyes film festivals like Joseph said there are lots of them, lots of, yeah, lots of opportunities here. 
I think this is this is all I can this is all I can see now. There's a lot out I'm all right. there's a lot I could see. This is all I can see now for okay. Thank you very much. This is it. Um, Also clapping here. Thank you. Um, um, some different impressions, but um, some very similar ones to Joseph. Um, I would like to ask uh, Udrun F. Whitlock now to come here and um, also give us an insight from quite a different view um, as a German studying film in Germany and um, now working as a filmmaker in Ghana, will also be given a good insight and I think she will tell us a bit more about the filmmaking itself. <laughs> so let's see what she has to say. Thank you. Okay, I try. Hello everybody. Hello Jude. Hello Joseph <laughs> in Cologne. Um, yeah, as uh, Beryl said, I was studying um, in, in Germany. Um, I was, um, I mean, I have a diploma in communication design. That, that means I studied uh, in a school which is very famous for photography, but also they did, um, uh, they have classes for photography. It's in Essen, is uh, the Volkwagen Schule. They uh, have different departments. They have industrial design, they have uh, communication design, they have music also. We had it in, in the beginning. They, um, and uh, it's a university uh, for this. So it was not really a, a, a film school, but uh, I was working in, in the movies uh, uh, for wow. some time as a um, still photographer. So I studied photography and I was working uh, during movie production as a still photographer. What I know about uh, film schools in Germany is they are the four biggest where you uh, mainly do feature film. This is, uh, there are two in Berlin, one is in Munich and one is in Ludwigsburg, what is close to Stuttgart. So I don't know much about the schools uh, where Joseph and Jude are. I think it is more like a, um, uh, yeah, you are not too much strict into the movies only. You are going to digital uh, um, filmmaking. Is it correct, Joseph? I, I, this is what I heard about the school. So, so it's also about arts and, and uh, like Jude said, they, they do more in, in right. and, and okay and animation. Um, what I really like uh, about what Joseph also said, um, during my studies, um, there was a lot of freedom in, in um, doing your own creative work. And um, this is something what you uh, always really should use um, as, as your opportunity when you are in a film school or in an art school. You will never have that much freedom in your creative work after again, because as soon as you start really uh, working in the movies, uh, there, there are production companies involved, there are TV uh, uh, channels involved, and they all want to talk about the, uh, uh, yeah, the movie, the story, whatever you want to tell. They all, all want to be involved in it. So in case you really go and study uh, filmmaking in Germany, use the time you have at the university and, and uh, take out for yourself as much as possible. You have the equipment, as Joseph also said, it is for free, later you have to rent it, you have to pay for it. So during studies you can really um, try out all the different ideas you have and to, to see what really is, is what you want to do or where, where your skills are involved. And um, also, what, what I like very much during studies, and this is also what, what uh, jo Joseph said, it is not that you go with your work to the uh, professor and he or she will tell you this is correct, this is not good. It is, um, it's an open discussion. You always, you talk with your fellow students about your own work, about other people's work, and you learn during uh, communication. and during trying uh, out what, what you like to do. Um, 
What I also like to say is, and maybe this is a little different um, to what I learned um, why people study uh, filmmaking in Ghana, people in Germany who go to film schools, first of all, they do it because they want to tell stories. And what I learned is uh, in Ghana you try to uh, do something where you can get a lot of money out of it. So you do it in Ghana more like a commercial, <laughs> like, a, like a business. You want to do movies in Ghana because you think you can make a lot of money with it. People in Germany, they go to film schools because that, that is their own passion. First is the passion. When they don't earn money with movies, then it is like that. The people also want to earn money, of course, but the, the passion is there to tell the stories and to make movies. And this you have to keep in mind when you go there. The, the focus for, I would say, 80% of the people who are working in the movie making arts, um, they don't do it because they want to be rich. They do it because they want to, to deal with this uh, media. Um, what also is, is um, very helpful, um, during studies, you can also apply a big um, movie production to do an internship there. Most of them, they, they um, have the shooting periods between May and October, and this is mostly also the time where the, the uh, vacation time for the university is. So you can apply for internship at the big movie companies, even when you are just a set runner there. You learn a lot how people work there and how the really big, um, big production, um, uh, how they organize themselves. I know a lot of uh, film students who, do, who are doing this during their, their vacation time. Sometimes they get small money, mostly they are not paid at all. But you learn a lot about how the organization of movie making is there. Um, yeah, what else? Yeah, I think I, 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 I said most of it uh, by now. Um, what, what I also find out uh, working as a... Um, filmmaker in Germany and in Ghana and also working as a, um, a, a member of the crew in Germany and a member of the crew in Ghana here. And it's uh, what Jude and Joseph both said, they are very much into the time um, table. So um, people re really try to, um, when they have the schedule for the day, they really want to finish it on the day. They, they don't like to uh, uh, put it to, to the next day. So it's, um, filmmaking is, is taken very serious uh, there. Just the, I mean, sometimes also there is a, a saying uh, on, on the film set that people say, oh, it's just a movie. Like um, when, when they are too much serious in, in, in what they are doing, but um, yeah, at the end, yeah, and what, what you really have to keep in mind when you, you study, really take all the opportunities you have and take as much out of it what you can and, uh, yeah, enjoy it. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Great. Um, so let's see. Do you have any questions for any of our speakers today? Then let me know, please. I have a question. Okay, Joseph has a question. I think you have first priority, so, okay, please ask your question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we all, everyone mentioned something about the 8,600 euros. Uh, is it a change law or something? Because in my case, if I remember well, I did not need to prove that I have something like that in my account. What I needed was a sponsorship letter. Um, it was like my dad just wrote that, oh, this, well, my dad just sent like his bank account 
but he didn't have to prove that that money was mine and I'm going to use that in Germany and the most important thing was I had a DAD's letter confirming the scholarship and I think that's what work trying to explain yeah um, so where, when did you need a letter from your father was that for the admission only no no I'm talking about the visa really you needed that because if you are on a scholarship you definitely don't have to show any proof of financial means if you have a full scholarship from DAD then you don't have to show that yeah um, so then the 8600 is not a case if you you know okay all right um, it's true. I think you got a scholarship for one year, but the program was for two years. So the second year wasn't approved yet or guaranteed. So that's why on top of the scholarship letter, you had to also show um, that you are prepared to show to have something for the second year. So that's quite specific okay. for the, for the um, scholarships that we give because it's mainly for one year. And then after one year, you can apply for prolongation. But at the time of the visa appointment, it will only show that you have guaranteed sponsorship for one year. And then you have to show that you have some idea already how you will sponsor the second year. And then if you're lucky, they will prolong it and then you don't even need it, but you have to show that you have at least something that you could um, rely on afterwards. Yeah. About the prolonging, it's not about luck actually, it's about using the one year effectively and then proving to the DAD that, hey, this is what next time. And that's it. You get it. It's true. It's true. I, I take that back. It's not I about it. luck. It's, yeah, no, no, it's, it's not. about what you produced. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. You have to um, show what you have done during the first year. Um, it's with all our scholarships. Yeah? It's possible to prolong them. You always have to give reports. But obviously, if it's filmmaking, they will also ask you for more than just a written report. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I think your got, yours got prolonged. So... Um, okay. Congrats, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any other question now? Okay. Can you come to the front and speak to the camera, please? Thank you. Yes, sir. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I wanted to ask um, if you have to prolong your scholarship program, do you have to reapply to the DA? That's a question. Because you apply and you get for one year. So do you have to apply again after one year before you get another scholarship to complete your master's? Thank you. Um, you have to apply again. Oh, sir, can I answer already? Yes, yes, yes. Go on. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thanks for the question. You have to apply again, but it's not the same process um, as the first time. The second application is actually, I don't know if I should say, no, it's actually quite simpler. Because when you're applying with the DAD now, it's a portal. You do everything by yourself. You just upload stuff and, you know, a portal. Everything goes to them. Um, with a second application, the most earlier, that you prove, you, like you do a report written, and then you prove that, hey, this one year, this is what I've done. And I have more stuff to do in the next year. This is why I need to prolong the scholarship. If you have enough material to prove that, hey, you can show them, for instance, a script you've written that you're going to shoot the film in the next year. And when they see that, they're like, oh, okay. And you know the thing about Germans, especially for how I got my, prolong uh, my, my prolongation, is that English? Prolongation. Um, I had to do a schedule, and they really need this. Back, like a schedule showing January, Monday, I will go to the editor to edit. Tuesday, I, like you need like a schedule that shows that hey, the next year this is what you are going to do. And when you have that set, you are gone. Like Jude said, there's a little bit of bureaucracy, but you need to take this bureaucracy seriously. It's not like in Ghana where there's paperwork, but you do ah, uh, you go and then uh, you'll never hear anything. Do follow the bureaucracy. Do it. Follow it judici judiciously and you get a result, they would, they would accept you. Like, it's very simple like that. I'm making it sound simple, but just follow it judicially, hard working, be hard working with it, and then you will get it. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Any more questions?
Okay, hello, Joseph. Hey, man, how you doing? Okay, my name is Samuel. I want to, want to find out that if you are coming from an English-speaking country like Ghana, do you have to prove with the IELTS test or just apply and believe that you have an English background? If, sorry, I didn't understand the question. If you are coming from a what? An English-speaking country, you want to apply for a post in English. Do you need to prove with the maybe IELTS course or they just accept you that you are from an English-speaking country, so you're okay? So you, you are from an English-speaking country yeah. and you want to apply for a school in Germany. That, 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 that the school teaches in English. Yeah, it's English, yeah. Yeah, the course okay. is English, yeah. So, yeah. So the thing about Germany is you don't need I, that IELTS. Right? I don't know. To be yeah. honest, this is probably I, I also come back in here. It's actually yeah. rather a question on our presentation, right? Um, yeah, okay. Exactly. Um, for the English proof, um, generally for um, a lot of programs you need to show that. Um, if it's specifically asked TOEFL or IELTS, then it's advisable to do it. But if you have studied already one full um, degree in Ghana, then you can also get a letter from your university stating that you have done your bachelor's, for example, in English. And usually that's enough for the application. Yeah. That's uh, to summarize it. Thanks uh, for the respondents. <laughs> you can also ask questions on our application, of course, uh, mm -hmm. on our presentation, of course. Yeah. I think it's uh, more interesting and active, but um, yeah. If you have more questions, of course, you can always come to our consultation hours. Um, um, if you want to apply and you face any challenges with it, then um, please contact us. Um, I would also like to um, say that we will send out um, the link. First of all, we are recording today's webinar um, and there are not as many people locked in actually who have registered. We had um, over 40 people who registered to uh, join the webinar and not all of them have um, come, which is normal actually. Um, so we, we have recorded and we will also put it on our YouTube channel so that others can see it or you can even look through it again if you want to see something again. Um, and second of all, we can also send out an email. Um, we have the contacts of those who are logged in and if you want, you can also leave your email addresses with us. You have the questionnaire there anyway, which we would like you to ask to fill in and then leave with us. Uh, we might send around a link again and some other documents that are interesting for you um, um, for the application specifically for the DAD um, scholarship. And um, Gudrun uh, Wittlock, for example, she had to leave right now, but she also says if there are any questions still coming on, then uh, we can also give you her contact um, in case you want to still ask something. And um, we'll um, ask these uh, two um, men as well if they might be interested in that or offering. Um, are there any questions right now, again, for Jude or Joseph or for us? Yeah, okay, all right. Um, okay, then one last question, yeah. Uh, okay, then I repeat it, why not? So, um, if you want to apply, what are the CDs you can apply so that you don't face what the second guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the portal is not always open, so you can't always um, send in your application. The application um, deadline is 31st of October. That's definite. And usually the, the um, portal opens in July. So you have July, August, September, October to um, upload the documents to get. You can register now. I mean, we are in the time. Um, if possible, you can still do it. If you have admission already or any idea what to do, um, check out the links. We have given you some uh, blue brochure, right? Are you listening to my response? <laughs> I'm responding to your question. <laughs> you have the brochure as well. There are quite a lot of links in it and also our scholarship basis. Um, the funding-guide.de is the database for all our scholarships and you will also find the arts and film scholarship in it and you see all the requirements, you see the procedure and there's also a button supply or um, put in uh, some sent in my application that's that. Um, and this is where you actually have to start the process. You can already register and get a, um, a, a password and so on for the portal and then see what you have to upload and work on that um, in the next time. 
I mean, even now there would be still time, otherwise next year. But you always apply one year in advance, uh, kind of. Yeah, it depends on the language course, that might be before. Um, then you go a bit earlier, but you definitely start the main program only in the next academic year. Yeah, you might go earlier for a German course before, but the course will start in October. It needs a lot of time for the application procedure. If you go on a self-sponsored basis, you could apply for any school course right now. Um, well, winter semester is too short, but then for the summer semester. I don't know about the film schools specifically, but there are several ones, and um, some courses start in summer semester. So it's even possible to go in March, April on a self-sponsored basis, so I'm quite sure. All right. Okay. Then I think we are done with questions and with our webinar, therefore. Thanks again to Joseph and to Jude for sharing experiences with us. Um, we will be in contact and yes, thank you very much for studying in Germany. <laughs> and good luck with your filmmaking. Thank you. Thank you.